الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ان الحمد لله نستعين ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان افضل الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار dear sisters and brothers I'm sure those of you who are professionals attend regularly courses for review of the knowledge of the whatever job they're doing. The purpose of these courses are twofold. One is to ensure that you haven't forgotten anything and two to learn even if these little things to bring yourself up to date. Today I want to discuss one of the most important aspects, if not the most important aspect of all Muslims and any Muslim's life. And this is a salah, prayer. I know that once this is mentioned, a lot of people will say, come on, it's a boring thing. We know all about it. I've been praying for 30 years and I've been praying for 40 years or I've just been praying for whatever. However, this subject is so important for all of us that we have to keep revising our knowledge about it. And there is no harm in repeating it over and over. There might be something that we don't know that we would learn, and there might be something that we are doing wrongly that might be destroying our prayers, as a matter of fact. So without going any more, I'm just going to start by talking about prayers. Now, as you know that prayer is the most important pillar of Islam. So apart from the shahada, once you've taken shahada, you've done it, you become a Muslim. Fasting, you fast if you can. If you are traveling or if you are sick or if you are not well, you don't fast. Zakah, you pay it if you have money. If you don't have money, you don't pay zakah. Hajj, you do once in a lifetime if you can. If you're unable to do it, you don't do it. But salah is something that you have to do. No matter what your physical status is, no matter how well you are, no matter whether you're ill or not, no matter where you are, even if you are traveling, you are fighting, you are anywhere. Salah is so important that Allah has said, ordered us to do the Salah all the time. Now the other thing, if you think about it, all the things about Islam have been brought to us through Prophet Muhammad, through Angel Jibreel, except Salah. When Allah wanted to tell us about Salah, He took Prophet Muhammad up to him. And he, this is where Salah was ordained, because of it, is, it is such an important part. As a matter of fact, it is the integral part of our religion. I'm just going to go very quickly. It's a big subject, so I'm going to go touch on some things, and I really would encourage each and everyone to go home and read a bit more. Just review what you know, revise your knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ tells us, Al-Ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynakum us-salah, faman tarakaha faqad kafar. The covenant between you and us is salah, prayer. If you leave it, you have done kufr, especially if you leave it intentionally. On Abi Huraira, it was narrated that the Prophet said, the first thing you're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment is your salah. The first thing, first and foremost. So Allah will ask the angels, how was his salah? How was this person's salah? Was it complete or not? If it was incomplete, he will then ask them, okay, look at the extra salah or the, 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 the sunan, the tatawa that he's done. And if, it is any, if there's anything missing from his salah, complete it with it. And if not, then there's a big problem. So the first thing we're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment, before our zakah, before our even looking after our parents, before jihad, before anything, is going to be our salah. This is the first thing. 
Hence, it is so important that we ensure two things. One is that we do perform our salah, but more importantly is that we do perform it properly. Because unfortunately, a lot of us do mistakes that can actually nullify the salah. There's a hadith that is a bit harsh, but it is important for us to know, that tells us about the status of salah of each and every one of us. So it says, if you do your wudu properly, and you do your salah properly, doing every part of it, which we're going to go through, you know, about the, the arkan, the, the cornerstones of the salah, then it is going to be wrapped like a nice, white, clean garment is wrapped, and it's taken up to Allah. And as the Salah is rising, it is praying for the person who's done the Salah, praising him. Now, this is fine. The second part is where it becomes right, very dangerous. If you don't perform your Salah properly, if you rush it, if you don't do it properly, if you do major mistakes in it, then it would be bunched up like a dirty cloth and thrown back into the person's face. And the Salah will tell the person, <coughs> will curse the person. It will tell him, you've wasted me. May Allah waste all your actions like you've wasted you. Very important story about Prophet Muhammad He was in, the, in his uh, mosque one day when a man stood up and started praying and he was just rushing his prayers. He wasn't doing his rukua properly or his sujood properly. And the Prophet told him, get up and pray again, for you have not prayed. So he did it again the same way, and he told him, get up and pray again, for you have not prayed. He did it again, and he said, get up and pray again, for you have not prayed. And the man said, look, this is how I know how to pray. He said, no, let me teach you how to do the prayer properly. So there are many other hadiths, but the, had the ones I just told you about, especially this one, shows the importance of doing the prayer, the Salah, properly. Because you might think that you are doing your prayers, whereas it's not accepted. Or it might be thrown back at you. Or even worse, it might be cursing you. So, some basic knowledge is very important. As I said, take this as being a revision course. I know most of us probably know a lot of what I'm going to talk about but take it as an important revision course and revise what you're doing. <coughs> so very quickly, there are several types of Salah. There is a, the prescribed Salah, Salat al-Fard, which is the five daily prayers. But there's also another Fard, which is the funeral prayers. The difference between the two is one of them is Fard Ain, which means that everybody has to do with the five daily prayers. Whereas the funeral prayers are for the kifaya. So if any of the Muslims have done it, it's enough. But if none of the Muslims have done it, then everybody will be punished. And that's the difference between for the line and for the kifaya. So this is one type. Then there is the sunan. This, the, the, the sunan that you do after your prayers or before your prayers, which the Prophet used to do. For example, sunnat al-fajr, two, 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 two rakahs before, sunnat al-duhr, two before, two after, four before, four after, al-maghrib, two after, and so on and so forth. And these are all sunan, and these are the ones that were covered in the hadith when Allah, uh, the Prophet told us that Allah will ask, was there anything missing in your salah? And they, these are very important to try and do them as much as possible because these are what going to rectify any, any deficiencies in your salah. And then the third type is the supererogatory salahs, which are the salat al tatawwur for example, the tajahad, the slide, the night prayers that you can do. And by the way, there's a misconception. A lot of people think that tahajjud or night prayers is only for Ramadan. It is not. It's for all the time through the year. Whatever you can do, you're adding to your, you know, there are bonuses that you are adding that you might be in need of, desperately in need of on the day of judgment. So don't let these forego. Now, very quickly, the conditions for the Salah to be obligatory. There are several conditions which are very basic, of course. Number one is Islam. If you're a Muslim, then Salah is obligatory on you. So there's no way of saying, look, I don't have time, I'm tired, whatever. There is no excuse. If you're a Muslim, Salah is obligatory on you. Then the second thing is sanity. 
So if there's somebody who's insane or starting to lose their marbles a bit, you know, in old age or whatever, don't press them to do their salah. They are, don't have to do the salah. Then it becomes not obligatory on them. Uh, 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 adulthood. So you have to be an adult for the salah to be obligatory. However, children are encouraged to start praying at an earlier age just to practice, but it is not obligatory on them. And of course, for ladies, uh, purity from menstruation and parturition. So if they're menstruating or after child labor, then salah is not obligatory for them. So these are the things that make salah obligatory. However, there are other things which are the conditions for the validity of the salah. So these conditions, I'm just going to go through them very quickly because as I said, we don't have much time, but you can revise that. So it is Islam, being a Muslim, being sane, being able to tell what you're doing during your prayer. The time of prayer has to come in, so you can't pray Asr before Asr prayer time is in. You have to be clean at Tahara, and you have to face the Qibla. You have to cover the aura, which we all know, of course, for men it is from the uh, umbilicus up to the knees, and for women it's all the body except for the hands and the face. And it should have a najasa, so if there's anything that's not clean uh, in your clothes, in your body, or the place where you're praying, you must clean it or you must avoid it. And of course, most importantly, is a niya. And this is something that sometimes we drop the intention. You must have the intention. You must stop for a moment and think. What am I going to do? I'm going to pray now. What am I going to pray? I'm going to pray sof, or I'm going to pray do, whatever. The intention is very important because no action is valid without an intention. So without wasting any more time, because we're already running short of time, I'm going to discuss the important points that I really want to discuss today. We must be able to differentiate between arkan salah which are the cornerstones of salah, wajibat salah which are the duties that you have to do in salah, and Sunan al-Salah, which are the things that Prophet Muhammad did and we thought we, we learned from him. These are very important to differentiate the different parts of it because Arkan al-Salah, if you drop any of them, your Salah is invalid. If you drop any part of the Arkan, you have to repeat your Salah or at least repeat the Raka'ah. Whereas if you drop part of the Wajibat, the duties, you don't have to repeat it. You just do Sardit Sah. You do the Sisiwudi uh, Sahwa at the end of your Salah, whether it's before or after Tasleem. Whereas the Sunan is things that you can do. There are things that you can do. And if you do them, you're going to be rewarded for them. But if you don't do them, you're not going to be punished and you don't have to do Sujudi Sah. So it's important to know these things. I'm going to concentrate mainly on the Arkan because these are the ones that, as I said, if you drop any of them, your Salah is null and void. It's invalid. Now, there are 14. There are 14. I'm sure you all know them, but just let's try to revise them together. Let's try to remember them. Let's try to memorize them. The Arkan, the cornerstones of the Salah, there are 14. Number one, in Niyya. You have to have the intention. You have to know what you're praying. For. Brothers, can you please come a bit forwards to make space for the latecomers? There's plenty of space. Please move forwards and move inwards. Thank you. So, Aniya is very important. And Aniya, now, I don't want to go into controversies because there are different opinions of different scholars. So, I'm just going to say what most scholars agree about. Aniya is mostly, of course, in the heart. But you usually utter it, and when you utter it, you don't utter it loudly, you utter it in a low voice. Or if you can keep it in your heart, it depends on which, which madhab you follow. However, in the niyyah, it's advisable to say, for example, Nawaitu usalli as subh I am going to pray now for the subh right? Don't, it's advisable not to say, I'm going to pray for the subh two rakahs. Because if you make a mistake and say three rakahs, you've nullified your salah. So keep the niyyah simple. Just make sure that when you stand for Salah, you have it in your heart and you utter it, not loudly, about what you're about to pray. Are you praying the actual uh, Fard or are you praying the Sunnah? Now, another important point about Inniya, you might start praying a Fard and then decide, hang on, I haven't prayed the Sunnah. You can change your Niya after you have started your Salah, from Fard to Sunnah. But if you have started to pray a sunnah, you can't change your intention to a fard. So it's a very important thing about intention. You can change from fard to sunnah, but you can't change sunnah to fard. 
Now, takbirat al-ihram. Takbirat al-ihram is an integral part of salah, where you say Allahu Akbar and you raise your hands with the thumbs parallel to your ears for men and for women just up to a shoulder level. As I said, I don't want to go, I know that there are several opinions about that, but this is the most accepted opinion of them all. I mean, I know that some people say, just raise your hands up there, that's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. But what's the problem with raising your arms properly parallel to your ears? Now, it's called takbirat al-ihram because once you go into, you say takbirat al-ihram, things that have been halal for you before become haram after that. So you can't talk, you can't eat, you can't turn, you can't do anything that you were doing before. Now, there are a lot of things to be said about Takbirat al-Ihram, which we might talk about. I don't think we'll have time today, but it's a very, very important part of Salah that a lot of us probably underestimate, but it is a very important part. So, number one, Niyya. Number two, Takbirat al-Ihram. Number three is Qiyam. It's important that when you are doing Takbirat al-Ihram, you have to be standing up. Of course, unless you are unable to. If you're sick, if you're ill, if you can't, you're sitting for whatever reasons, then you don't, you, you don't have to stand up. But some of the mistakes that a lot of us do is, for example, even if they're praying on a chair, sitting on a chair because they can't do rugu or sugood, they don't do takbirat al-ihram sitting on the chair. You have to stand up to do takbirat al-ihram. So you must be standing up. Another very common mistake which we see, especially in mosques like here, People who come in late, they find that the, pray, the people who are praying are about to do the rukur and they want to get into the rukur because if you miss the rakah, it doesn't count. So they say, Allah Akbar, and they go straight into rukur. You have missed one of the arkan. You must say, Allah Akbar, then stand still. This is one of the arkan. Very important. It's one of the basic cornerstones of salah. All right, so you've done niyyah, takbirat al-ihram, then al-qiyam. Standing up straight. Then, Qira'at al-Fatiha. You have to read al-Fatiha. And I'm going to elaborate more on this because it's a very, very important area of Salah. And a lot of us do mistakes there. So I'm going to discuss this in detail in the second khutbah, insha'Allah. But Qira'at al-Fatiha is important that it's done properly. It has to be done clearly. Every letter should be read properly. So quite often when we are praying and when I rush, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim. You can't do that. It is not right. You have to read Al-Fatiha clearly. Every single letter has, be, has, has to be pronounced properly. And then al ruku So once you've done Qiraat Al-Fatiha, by the way, the, the reading of a small surah is not part of al arkan all right? So if you don't do it, it's a sunnah. You don't even have to do sujood as So if you say, I'm praying duhr, I'm doing my first rak'ah, I, I read al-fatiha, but I forgot to read a small surah. It doesn't matter. You don't even do sujood as for that. All right? It's a sunnah. Now, rukuah is very important as well, and that's one of the common mistakes that we do it. The Prophet Sallallahu told us, taught us, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray the same way you saw me praying. So how did we learn about our prayers? By watching the Prophet ﷺ. How did he used to pray? How did he used to do the rukur? He used to do the rukur by going down, putting his hands on his knees, going down to 90 degrees. The Sahaba tell us that when the Prophet did rukur, if you put a glass of water on his back, it would stay still. So this is the real rukur, the proper rukur. Not as sometimes we do when we rush. Subhanahu rabbi al we just do that. No. Rukua means rukua. It means going down. Of course, if you have a medical excuse, that's a different story. I'm talking about, you know, the average person, the average people. And the Prophet, when he was in his 60s, he was doing the rukua, as I explained to you, 90 degrees, so right angle. All right, so let's just revise them again. Al-Niyya, Takbirat al-Ihram, Al-Qiyam, Qiraat al-Fatiha, Al-Rukua. And then the next one is Al-Qiyam and Al-Rukua. So you do the rukua, and then you stand up straight from rukua. Now, quite often, again, when we are rushed, when we want to rush things, we do rukur, and before even we get it up, we start going into sugood. This is not radik, this is not right. You, sh you can't do that. You have to stand up straight from rukur. And we say, Sami Allah, liman hamida, rabbana lak alhamdu, rabbana lak alhamdu, wa shukur, hamdan kathir. Whatever you want to say, that's fine. All these things are either wajibat or sunnah. 
but you have to stand up straight. This is a ruku. So it's important to differentiate between the two. You have to stand up straight. Whether you say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, whether you say, Sami Allahu liman hamida rabbana alak al hamd, whether you say, Sami Allahu liman hamida rabbana alak al hamd, wa shukr hamd, whatever, you can add whatever you want. All these things are fine to do. You're going to be rewarded for them. But if you don't do the standing up bit, which is a part of your salah, you're going to nullify your salah. So that's why it's important to differentiate between what is ruqn and what is wajib and what is sunnah. So now we've stood up from rukur, now we go into sujood. And again, sujood, the frustration has to be done the same way that Prophet Muhammad taught us. As a matter of fact, he said, as sujudu ala sab'in, on seven, seven bones. So your forehead and nose has to be touching the ground, both hands, both knees, and both feet, the toes of the feet, and they have to be facing al qibla. This is how the proper sujood is done. And then al jalusu min al sujood, sitting up properly. Quite often we see people doing sujood, they get up halfway and then they go back into sujood. This is not right. You have missed one of the arkan. And as I said again, I keep emphasizing, I don't want to keep repeating myself. Rukn is something that if you miss, it nullifies your prayer. So you must sit up properly from your sujood. Please, can you move in? There are more people coming in. Can you please move forwards and move in to make more space? Thank you. Now, the next very important item in the arkan is a tuma'nina. Tuma'nina means that every movement you do, you have to do it and settle. And the scholars tell us what is the minimum amount of time? The minimum amount of time, what allows, they say, what allows all your bones to settle. So if you're doing a sujood, and then sit up from the sujood, allow your body to settle down before you go back into the second sajda, and, and so on and so forth. As I said, there, these things can be discussed in details. I'm quite happy to discuss it with whoever wants to, but we don't have time now. So this is one of the things that a lot of us, by mistake, do and it's only spoiling our salah at tumanina you must every movement you must make sure that you have done it and you have you know you've done it properly then it glues the tashahud al akhir then sitting for the final tashahud then you must sit first and then start the tashahud you don't let, you, you not while halfway you're sitting up from your sujood you start the tashahud you must sit up first tumanina and then start the tashahud and then the salat ibrahimiya we know that the tashahud is the first part of the tahiyyatu lillah. Wa salli ibrahimi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. So the two of them, and then at taslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You want to say assalamu alaikum only, fine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, the other side quietly, that's fine. All these are just variations, but as long as the taslim is done. And then the final, the 14th point is at tartib. Everything has to be done in sequence. So if you are standing up, you forgot to do your ruku, or you go into sujood, you can't then get up and do ruku. You have to repeat the whole rakah again because you have uh, nullified your, by, by going through the arkan. Now, the next is the wajibat. We don't have time to go, to go through that, but very quickly, uh, the wajibat, if, if you do, if, if you miss one of them, you do sujood zahu. For example, sitting for the shahud in, in the second rakah. The second rakah, you sit down to do your tashahud. If you forget to do that, you don't repeat the rak'ah, you just do sujood at the end of your prayer. There are many other things we don't have time for. And then sunan is salah, which is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to do. And there are sunan qawliya, things that he used to say, and sunan fa'liya, things that he used to do. And these are, that's a very long subject. And of course, for those who want to go to al-ihsan, the excellence, and you want to do all the sunan, there are about 32 sunan that uh, have been narrated by uh, scholars, and so, some of them, I said, up to 64. So a lot of pro uh, proper of, lot of opportunities to get more tawar. So as I said, it's a very big subject. We don't really have time to go through them all. So I'll have to stop here because I want to discuss al fatiha the second part. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدًا عبده ورسوله 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم so again very quickly the final khutbah that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave to the muslims when he was in his death on his deathbed they actually had to pull him down to get him up just to talk to the muslims it's a, it's, it's a lovely khutbah unfortunately i don't have time to read it all but i'm just going to read one sentence where he said ayyuha nas o you people allah Allah the Salah, Allah, Allah the Salah, and he repeated it three times. As Salah. He was telling. That's why he was telling his companions, just for the final meeting with them. As Salah. He was telling them how important it is. So this is how important As Salah is. We must not waste it. Now, I just want to touch very quickly on an important point, which is the cause of controversy now, especially for people who sort of just watch people praying on the television and they copy them about Qira'at al-Fatiha. As I said, Qira'at al-Fatiha is an integral part of Salah. The Prophet says very blandly, very openly and very clearly, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب. If you have not read al-Fatiha in your Salah, there is no Salah. It, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not on void. So important, very important to read the Fatiha. Uh, another hadith, من صلى صلاة لم يقرأ فيها بأم القرآن or in another narration, so it, it's null and void again. If you don't read Fatiha uh, al-Kitab, if you Fatiha in your Salah, it is null and void. Now, that's fine. We all know that. But are we all reading Al-Fatiha? Are we reading it completely? Now, the problem that happens is I know that there are trends or some of the uh, opinions is about Al-Basmala. So you see people standing up for salah, they do whatever, and then they start saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Now, by doing that, they've omitted one of the ayat of Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is Sab'un Matani. If you open any Mus'haf, you will find that Bismillah rahman rahim is marked as number one in Fatiha, right? In the others, in the other suwar, it is not part of the suwar. It is sort of a separation between the two. As I said, I don't want to go into controversies here. Now, there are three opinions here. One opinion is that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is an integral part of Surah Al-Fatiha, and it has to be read loudly in Salat al jahriya or secretly in Salat al sirriya and this is uh, the, the opinion of Imam Shafi'i, and this is the opinion that I've been taught anyway. <coughs> There's another opinion that it is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is just to separate Surah from each other, except in two situations, which is in the Fatiha al kitab and in Surah Al-Naml. Wa'inna min Sulaiman wa'inna Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So these are the two situations in the Quran where it is an integral part of the Quran. However, the holders of this opinion say that you don't have to read it aloud. But what we don't realize is quite often when we are following the Imam, the Imam has read it, but he didn't say it loudly, so you haven't heard it. So you think that you don't have to read it. So when you're praying alone at home, you don't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in which case you have omitted one ayah from the Fatiha, in which case you have made your salah void. So it's very important. There's a very, very weak opinion, but I think none of the scholars follow it now, which is that Al-Fatiha is not part of Fatiha, Basmala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not part of Fatiha al-Kitab, but I think you'll find that this is a very, very weak opinion, and if you look at all the masahif, all the uh, Quran that you have, look at it, go home and look at it, you'll find that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is marked as ayah number one in Al-Fatiha. Ibn al-Qayyim has tried to find an answer to this, and he says that Prophet Sallallahu sometimes used to read Al-Basmala in a loud voice, and sometimes used to read it in a low voice. So it's probably a compromise. So whatever it is, I mean, it, I, I don't think this is really what makes a difference, but then what makes a difference is if you skip it. So you cannot skip al-basmala in your salah. Very important to remember. Now, when you are praying khalf al-imam, when you're praying in salah like today, salat al-jum'ah, now, the, uh, when, because the salah does not occur except if you read Fatiha al-kitab. Now, if the imam reads the Fatiha, then that's enough for you. If the Imam reads the Fatiha while he's reading it, you don't read any Quran because we know that uh, either 
قرئ القران فاستمعوا له وانصتوا لعلكم ترحمون if the quran is read you have to listen you can't do something so when the imam is reading you don't start to read the fatiha as well you have to listen to his reading right now if the imam stops for a short period after he reads the fatiha then you can read the fatiha however some people don't do that it doesn't matter because what the imam does is enough for you so it's important that uh, while the imam is reading you listen you don't read at the same time uh, however in the salah sirriya so if you're praying for example duhr where the imam does not read aloud then you have to read al fatiha you don't just stand there you have to read al fatiha now if you want to read a small surah that's fine but you have to read al fatiha so the fatiha is an integral part very important without it prayer does not occur if the if you're praying in jama'a the imam reads al fatiha well and good if he stays quiet for a while you read it if it's a salah sirriya you must read al fatiha Now, as I said, it's a very big subject. There are many aspects of prayer that you know I would have liked to discuss, but unfortunately, we're short of time. One of the very important aspects of prayer, which hopefully at one stage we'll be able to discuss it further, if you know, if we, if I get another chance, uh, and that is how to uh, achieve khushu' in your salah, because there is a very serious hadith that says, although it's a hadith da'if, but the meaning stands. ليس للعبد من صلاته إلا ما وعى منها. You will only be rewarded from your prayers what you have, what, what you what you realize what you're doing. So you know that a lot of us do that. Unfortunately, I'm praying, and then as I'm praying, I remember, you know, what time is my appointment? What am I going to do with my business? I've got to go there. I've got to go there, and all of a sudden, I find, hang on, wh wh where am I? Did I read Fatiha? Did I do my report? Did I do my salut? This is very very serious, and it's something that unfortunately we all. suffer from and there are ways to remedy it and there are ways to achieve uh, proper khushu'a and salah which hopefully we might be able to discuss in another uh, time inshallah when we have time i'm sorry to have taken so long but it's such an important point that we have to go through اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في ما اعطيت امين وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت اللهم ارحمنا بترك المعاصي ابدا ما احييتنا وارحمنا بترك ما لا يعنينا وارزقنا حسن النظر فيما يرضيك عنا وازن قلوبنا حفظ كتابك كما علمتنا واشرح به صدورنا ونور به قلوبنا واشرح وابي و... و... السنتين يا رب العالمين آمين. عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واستغفروا ويغفر لكم واقيموا الصلاه الله الله